two to five and three to 10 is the function. So I can define function as what? The rules. So a function can be defined as the rules or a function is the rule that maps input variables to output. That map input variables to output variables. That is a function. Okay, so the rule that I used to map the input variable to the output variable is the function. So I am trying to demonstrate to you that functions have their roots from relations and mapping. So the rule that I have used to map one to one, two to five, and three to 10 is the function. You get the point. So if you study it, carefully, if you study the first example carefully, who can tell me the rule that I have in mind for my mapping? Who can tell me, who can study it? I have mapped one to one, two to five, and three to 10. Who can tell me the rule that I have used to do my mapping? Yes. Who can tell me? Oh. Is there anyone who can help me? Yes, please. Okay, so I guess if you, have, if you can help me, raise your hand. Raise your hand. If you raise your hand, I will, uh, I will ask you to unmute. So Lydia, Lydia. Unmute yourself and talk. Okay. Uh -huh. So the rule is 2x plus 1. 2x plus 1. Yes, please. The rule is 2x plus 1. That is what Lydia is saying. Let's check if it is true. So this is how we write F, uh, the function. Y is, is equal to function of what? X. It means that Y depends on X. That is how we write it. Y is a function of X. So Lydia is telling us that Y is equal to 2X plus one. Let's check. Let's check. One maps to one. If you multiply two times one, what do you get? You get two plus one is equal to three. But one maps to one. Therefore, we cannot say that the rule is 2x plus one. Okay, Lydia, we cannot say that the rule is 2x plus one. Because if you multiply two by one, you are going to get two. If you add one to the two, you are going to get three. But one maps to one. One does not map to three. So Lydia, I am sorry to say that that is not the rule. Yes, any other person to help us? Uh, Lydia, lower your hand if you don't, if you are not uh, this one. Any other person to help us? Yes, any other person to help us? Uh, Nanama, Nanama, I'll mute yourself and talk. Okay, the rule is x squared plus one. So Nanama is saying that the rule is x squared plus one. Let's check. So y is equal to, Nanama is saying that the rule is x squared plus one. This is my, how I represent my squared, x squared plus one. Okay, oh, x squared plus one. Nanama is saying that the rule is x squared plus one. So let's check. Let's check and see if it is true. So we have the first one, 
is what? One. The x is one. So one squared gives us what? One plus uh, one. Given us what? Two. Okay, okay. Uh, let me. I have that is the uh, that is the rule I had in mind. Though yes, that is the rule I have in mind. So let me change this one to uh, two, please. Yes, this is supposed to be two. Sorry, and uh, this is supposed to be two. Yes. So one plus one. Uh, one squared is one. One times one is one. Plus one gives us two. Okay. I had that is the rule I had in mind. So I'm supposed to make here two. I'm sorry. So here is supposed to be two. Okay. Now the second one is two. Two squared is what? Four. Four plus one gives us what? Five. And then the next one is what? Three. Three squared is nine. Nine plus one is ten. So the number is correct. Okay. So the function. The function is that is such that x squared plus one, uh, y is equal to x squared plus one. That is the word, the function. And that is very true. Thank you very much, Nanama. Obaya, mute yourself. Okay, so who can help me with the second, the rule for the second one? Yes, Nyantechi. Or mute yourself. Um, why, why is x over two or half x? Okay, so uh, Nyatech is telling us that the second one, the rule is that y is equal to x over two or half of x, okay, or half of x, and that is what, correct. So 10 divided by two gives us five. Six divided by two gives us what, three. And 12 divided by two gives us what? Six. So you are on point. Okay, Nantity, thank you very much. So that is what a function. So the function is what a well behaved relation. Okay, you can say it is a well behaved relation, or it is the rule that maps input variables to output variables in a well determined manner. Okay, in a well determined manner. And that's what a function. So we now know what a function is and the root or from where we got what functions. Now let's look at the types of function. Before we go on any question, any question on this so far, any question? Okay, if there is no question, let's proceed. So let's go on to the types of functions. The types of functions. So types of functions. So the first type we'll consider is what we call linear functions. Linear functions. So anytime we talk of a linear function, if, if you hear the word linear, think of a line. Okay, linear line. So a linear function is a function of a line. And we all know this right from JHS. So a, a, the linear function is in a form y is equal to mx plus c. This is how a linear function looks like. So anytime you see a function behaving like this or any function in this form, it tells you that it is a linear function. Okay, it is a linear function. So where y is the output variable, okay? Y is what? The output variable. Y is the output variable. Uh, X is the input variable. M 
is the what to call the gradient or the slope. Or slope. Okay. And C is a Y intercept. Or what we call the constant. Okay. Or what we call the constant. So that is how a linear function looks like. Okay. And you know, the demand function is a linear function. It's in the form of a linear function. Supply function is also a linear function. Okay, we did it in microeconomics last semester. Okay, they are all they all take the form of linear functions. So these are examples of linear functions. Okay, so you will be asked moving forward, we'll be asked to develop some linear functions from certain problems. You would have to calculate the M, which is the gradient. And you know what M? How to calculate M? M is the slope, and that is y1. Y2 minus what? Y1 all over what? X2 minus X1. So that is for finding the gradient. Okay, the formula for finding the gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that is the first example or the first type of functions or one of the types of functions. We'll come, we'll visit linear functions into details later on as we move ahead. Let's look at the second, this one. We also have another function, another type of function called polynomial functions. Polynomial functions. So a polynomial function takes the form y is equal to a not. I would rest the, the function. Okay. Plus. a1 x to the power one plus a2 x to the power two plus a n x to the power n let me address the function so a not a1 x to the power one A1, X to the power one, then A1, X to the power one, then A2, X to the power two. A2, X to the power two. Okay. Then we have an x to the power n. So an x to the power n means that it goes on and on and on. Okay, it goes on and on and on. So we can have a not plus a one x one plus a two x two plus a three x three plus a four x going 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 going. Okay, this is how polynomial functions look like. So if you see a, a, an example of a function like y is equal to, uh, let's say, 2, 2 plus uh, 2x squared, or 2x plus 4x squared plus uh, 6x cubed 
going, going, going. This is an example of a polynomial function. Okay. It's an example of a polynomial function. Okay. So the n gives us the the uh, the n is the power of the degrees. Okay, it can go on and on and on and on. Antichi. In questions, I see the um a x. I see the x power, but I don't see the a one. I've never seen anything beside the a. Like a, an example, two x raised to the power three plus two x raised to the power. Something. No, no, I I, see you will see. You will see. Uh, this is the general form. You will see, uh, like. Uh, for example, two, one, three, two, down, down, that this, I am only numbering my A. Oh, all right, all right, thank you. Sorry, you see, so the form is, I am only numbering my A, my A's. You see that the A remains, uh, A, the A's are the same. So it doesn't mean someone will think that if I don't number the A, someone will think that the number here should be the same for all. But this is the general form, so I'm only numbering my A. But when you see the example of a function life I've given down there, you will see two, one, or four, two. But you see the, the example I've given down there, you can't see any, any subscripts attached to the, to the numbers with the X. Okay, but because it is the general and I'm using A, that's why I'm numbering the A's. I hope it is clear. Thank you. Yes, that is it. So that is polynomial functions. Okay, that's polynomial functions. Now also have other type of function called rational functions. Okay, rational functions. Rational functions. Now a rational function is the, uh, is the ratio of any two polynomial functions. Okay, so if two polynomial functions are dividing or are dividing, that gives us what to call a rational function. Okay, so we can have a f of x, f of x divided by g of x. Divided by g of x. Okay, if you see any two polynomial functions dividing, that gives us a rational function. Okay, that gives us a rational function. Now, you also have another type of function called exponential functions. Exponential functions. So, an exponential function takes the form. Y is equal to E Y is equal to E to the power X. So if you see any function like this, it's an exponential function. So the E is a constant. Okay, the E is a constant and it can be found on your calculator. So the E is a constant which is equal to 2.718281828. Okay, the E is a constant that can be found on your calculator. Okay, that can be found on your calculator. So that is, that's it. I also have what to call the, uh, another type of function called inverse functions. Okay, inverse. So inverse. Inverse function. So the inverse function is when, let's say, uh, I have, y is equal to uh, 2x plus 1. And I make x the circuit. Then I'm finding the inverse of this function. Okay, 
I'm finding, so y is equal to 2x plus 1. If I make x the subject of this function, then that becomes the inverse of this function. So if I want to make x the subject of this function, I'll get x is equal to uh, y divided by 2 minus 1, OK? Or half of y. OK, let me make it y divided by 2 minus one. Okay, y divided by two minus one. So that is the inverse of this one function. So these are the types of functions that what we have. We are going to work later on with linear functions, we'll be working with polynomial functions, we'll be working with exponential functions and even what rational functions. All these functions we'll be working with them as we move forward. So these are the types of functions that work we have. Okay. Now let's move on. Any question here? I hope there is no question. Let's move on to the application of the slope of the linear function. So I told you that we'll be coming back to linear functions. We are going to look at applications of the slope of a linear functions or application of the slope of a line. Yes. Hello. Okay. Are we safe? Hey, hey. I don't, I don't, I can't even mention the name. If you are catchy or so. Oh, yes, yeah, please. Um, the inverse function, please, do you make X the function of? Yes, so for example, we have y is equal to something, you are making x the subject. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So let's move on to the application of the slope of a line. application of the slope of a line. That's what we are going to consider next. So I told you that the linear function is equal to mx plus what? C. mx plus C. And the slope of a line, which is the m, is equal to y2 minus y1 over what? X2 minus X1. So this is how questions on this are given. You'll be given a problem and you will have to develop a linear function for it. Okay, you'll be given a problem and you have to develop a linear function for it. So in a problem that you'll be given, you'll be asked to develop a linear function. So how do you do that? Two steps to do that. Okay, two steps to do that. First of all, you find the M using this formula. Okay, first of all, you find the M using this formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus what? x1, that's the first thing to do. Then the second is to find the C. So when you are to develop a function, using a problem, a linear function using a problem, you have to find the M and the C, okay? The M and the C. So the M, you will find it using Y2 minus Y1 or X over X2 minus X1. Then you find the C using this formula, okay? C is equal to Y, y minus mx. So you are, I've just made or mx minus y. 
No, uh, Y minus MX. So I've just made C the circuit. Okay, I've just made C the subject of this particular function. So you first of all find the M, then you find the C using this formula. When you finish, then you come and put them in there, maintain your Y and the X, then you get the function. That is all that you are going to do under the application of a slope of a line. Okay, so let's look at examples. So I have this question here. I have this question here. I want someone very vocal with a good and tantalizing voice to read for us. Yes, who do that? Who, who do as the answer? Okay, so Agnes Dapa, read for us. Agnes. Okay, say. So suppose consumers will demand 60 units of a product when the price is 15.30 pesos, Ghana cities, right? Per unit and 35 units when the price is 19.30 Ghana cities each. Find the demand equation, assuming that it is linear. Find the price per unit when 40 units are demanded. Yo, Agnes, thank you very much. But if you are reading numbers, any number after point, you mention it one one, you don't mention it as a whole number. For example, 15.30, not 15.30. Okay, 19.30, okay, not 19.30. So after a point, you don't read the number as a whole, you mention the numbers one by one. I get to the point. So that is for your information. Yes, Thank you. So we are to find the demand equation or the demand function from this particular problem. And also find the price per unit when 40 units are demanded. So this is, you apply the slope of a line to find the demand function. Remember when I was telling you about the types of functions, when I mentioned a linear function. I told you that an example of a linear function is a linear function. Uh, it's a demand function or yes, the demand function. I mentioned demand and supply. So the demand function usually is a linear function. Okay. It's usually a linear function. So we are to find the demand function. Now, the demand function is usually in the form. Okay. Demand function is in the form P of X. P of X is equal to AX. P of X is equal to AX plus B. This is how usually the demand function is given. And you agree with me that this particular function follows the linear function. Y is equal to MX plus C. You see? P of X is equal to AX plus B. So Y is equal to what? MX plus C. Okay, so if you have something like this, you have to you apply the, uh, what I was saying. So first of all, you find your M, which is the A in this context, and you find the C, which is B in this context. So let's put down our, uh, parameters. Now, P here is in the place of Y. You can see that. Okay. If I say P of X is equal to AX plus B, P here is in the place of Y. So when you see price, that's Y. Okay. If you see price in the uh, problem, that is your Y. And if you see X, X there, it is already at its place. So X is the units. Okay. X is the units and price is the, uh, price is the Y. So they said that suppose consumers would demand 60 units. Therefore, X1, X1 is equal to what? 60. When the price 
is 15.30. So that is P1. Okay, that is Y1. P is Y, so that is Y1. So Y1 is 15.30. And 35 units when the price is 19.30. So the 35 is X2. The 35 is X2. X2 is 35. Okay, and then Y2 is what? 19.30. So I hope you all understand. P is in a place of Y. So your price is your Y and your X is your unit. So suppose consumers would demand 60 units of a product when the price is 15.30 and 35 when the price is 19.30. So our X1 is 60, Y1 is 15.30. Then X2 is 35, Y2 is 19.30. So this is the information that you need to solve this particular question. So we say, first of all, we find our what? Our M. We first find our M, and our M is what? Y2, so solution. Solution. We find our M. Our M is what? Y2, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus what? X1. Okay, so moving forward, what is our Y2? Our Y2, our Y2 is 19.30 minus Y1 of 15.30. Okay, then our uh, uh, X2 is 31. Five. 35. Yes, 35 minus, minus 60. 60. Good. So you do that calculations for me. And what do we get? Four over negative 25. So. Uh, give, me, uh, give it to me in this mouse. Give it to me in this mouse. Negative 0 0.16. So negative 0 0.16. So negative 0 0.16. So that is our M. Point one six. So our M is equal to negative 0 0.16. Okay, that is our M. Now having found our M, we can now find our what? C, in this case, B. So we have found A, so we'll find C. And I said, the C, the formula for C is equal to, the formula for C is equal to what? Y, y minus y minus mx so you choose um, any of the y's okay you, you choose any of the y and you choose any of the x but if you are choosing x1 use y1 eh? and if you are choosing x2 use y2 you don't choose x1 and y2 you don't come you don't do that combination so I can decide to use X1 and Y1. So to be on the safer side, I always advise that go with the one, one. You can also go with the two, two. You still get the same solution or you still get the same answer. Okay, but let's go with the one. So our Y1 is what? 15.30. Minus our M gave us Negative 0 0.16 times 
times uh, x1, which is what? 60. So what do we get for C? So what do we get for C? C. 9.6. So you check, oh, it is negative, negative. Yes. Minus, minus becomes positive. Yeah. What do you 24. get? 24.6. 24. 24.9. Hey, why you got two different answers? 24.6. It's 24.9. 24.9. Yeah. 24.6. Point 0.9. Hey, uh, 24.9. 24.9. So yeah. yeah. 24.9. Okay, thank you. So having found M and the C, you cannot develop your linear or the demand function. So our demand mm. function will be P of X is equal to P of X is equal to our M or the A give us negative 0 0.16. Okay. Plus our C gave us what? 24.9. That's it. So that is our demand function. Okay, that is the demand function. Oh, sorry. You put X Except here. Say X. Yes. 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 You put X here. Thank you. So our demand function is negative 0 0.16 X plus 24.9. Okay, that is as simple, very simple. First find the M and then find the C and then put them is there any question? Yes, Yasmin. Uh, sir, please, I wanted to know how you got the initial function. Is it from the linear function you gave us, like when we were beginning? Which initial function? Which function? The P uh, of x is equal to ax plus b. Yes, I, I was saying that. The demand function is given in this form. P of X is equal to AX plus B. And it's the same as the Y is equal to MX plus C. Okay, so take note of this P of X is equal to AX plus B. Usually in exams, that is how you'll be given the demand function. That is how it will be, uh, it will be given. Okay, so it is the same as the price function. Demand function is the same as the price function. Take note of that. Okay, it's the same as the price function. Take note of that. Yes, I don't know how to say Um, please, why do we have to use the PX is equal to AX plus B while we have the Y is equal to MX plus C? Yes, now I, like I said, the demand function takes the form of the linear function, which is y is equal to mx plus c. But they usually want to present it in the form p of x. It means that the price is dependent on quantity. That's the inverse demand function. So they, want to use, they usually want to present it p of x is equal to ax plus b. But it's the same as y is equal to mx plus c. So I'm only bringing that p of x is equal to x plus b so that when you see it somewhere, you won't get confused. Okay, so that when you see it somewhere, you will get confused. And I want you to be conversant with that one. Because I know you know why it's equal to MX plus C, but you don't know P of S equal to AX plus B. So I have brought that one in. So that you know that it is the same thing as Y is, y is equal to MX plus C. So you don't get confused. Okay, I hope Adumako, uh, the one who asked the question, I hope it is clear now. So why is it clear? Adumako, or are you the one who asked the question? Okay, John. Okay, Johnson, you are on the floor. Yes, sir. Uh, if I get you right, um, it means in exams, if you use Y equals MS plus C, you are not going to be penalized. Yeah, you are not going to be penalized, but in the exam, you hardly see Y is equal to MS plus C. 
Okay. You would rather see, you would most often see p v of x is equal to a x plus b. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, thank you, sir. And you will follow the same y is equal to m x plus c where you are finding m and the c and then use it to develop the function. That's all. Okay, thank you very much, sir. You are welcome. Any other question? Okay, the absence of and let's move on to the second part of the question. It says also find the price per unit when 40 units are demanded. So find the price when x is 40. You know that unit is x. So we have to find p when x is 40. So this one you have found your demand function already. So where you see x, put 40 there. That's all. Okay, that's all. So when x is equal to 40, then we'll get p is equal to negative 0 0.16 into bracket 40 plus 24.9. Okay, then you work this one out and you get your p. So what is our p? 18.5. Our P is what? 18.5. So that's all. Okay. So that is uh, one example. Okay. Yasmin. Um, sir, please, when you are solving for when X is 40, the P is equals, why do you do P into bracket X? Because I but am. It doesn't matter. I, no, no, that one, that's, I'm finding the P itself. This is not the function. This is the P itself. Um, when it is a function, then you can make it P of X. Okay. But when it is the price itself, you don't make it P of X. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? So let's solve another example. Okay, let's solve another example. And sir, please question about okay, the price. Ask. I supposed to bring the city sign. I bring it, please bring it. Okay. Some of you should don't bring the city sign. You will never understand it. So please bring it. So I have a second question here. Let's solve that one also. So the one who read for me, kindly read again. Okay, so suppose the value of a mountain bike decreases each year 10% of its original value. If the original value is 1,800 Ghana cities, find an equation that expresses the value V of the bike T years purchase where t is greater than or equal to zero or t is less yeah. than or equal to 10. This is an example of straight line depreciation. Okay, thank you very much. So we are to find an equation that expresses the value which is represented with v, okay, in terms of t. So here they are telling us that the value is dependent on t. Therefore, the value is a function of t. V is a function of t. V depends on time. That is what they are trying to tell us. Okay, so... That's what they are trying to tell us. They are trying to tell us a function of t. Well, v depends on t. So like the way we have p on x, v on t. But which one y and which one will be our x? Who can tell me? Who can, which, if v is on t, v depends on t, which one will be our y, which one will be our x? Yes, anyone to tell me? Please, still will be our X and V will be our Y. Thank you very much. So V is the dependent, is the output. Okay. And then T is the input. So time will come before the value. 
So we are saying that value time. Okay, so as she said, V is our Y, T is our X. But note that it still follows the what? The slope of a line. It, it still follows, please mute yourself. Please mute yourselves, mute yourselves, unless I call you to the floor. Please mute yourselves unless you are called to the floor. Don't unmute yourself. Okay, so y is equal to mx plus c. It follows the same. Okay, by this time, it is v of t, but it's the same. Okay, it is the same. So, we have to find our y. Someone has told us that v is the y, x is the is the is the time. So we have to find our y1 and our x1. We have to find our y2 and our x2. So it says, suppose the value of a mountain bike decreases each year by 10% of its original value. The original value is 1,800. So that is y1 or v1. Okay. So y1 is 1,800. Now, if y1 is 1,800, who can tell me x1? Who can tell me what x1 will be? Yes. Who can tell me what x1 will be? So at what point in time is the original value constant or is the original value the same? That is when time is zero. Okay, so they bought the bike today at 1,800. Time is zero. Or the year is zero. I hope you understand. Time is zero. So Y1 is 1,800. X1 is zero. Today, they bought the thing. Now, one year has come. So X1, X2. Is one x2 becomes one x2 becomes one now if one year comes what will be why uh, what will be the value of the bicycle they said that the value of the bicycle decreases by 10 percent each year so every one year the value goes down by 10 percent so the value which is 1,800 goes down by 10%. So what would the value after one year? Who can tell me? 180. What would be the value of the bike after one year? Raise up your hand before you talk. Don't just talk. Let me call you before you talk. So what would be the value of the bike after one year, Yasmin? It would be 1,620. 1620. No, let me hear from what Johnson will also say. Johnson, what do you think will be the value? I would say I also have 1620. Yo, let me listen to the last person. Yeah, what? Yeah, Johnson, what Yeah, oh, yeah, you, are, you have raised your hand. I have called you to the floor. Okay, let me give the opportunity to Martha. And please, it's 1,620. So 1,620. Yeah, bro. Let's move on. Yo, yo, please. We have heard you. Thank you. Yo, thank you. So why is it six hundred and twenty? Yes, thousand six hundred and twenty. So please let's understand how they got the thousand six hundred and eighty uh, twenty.
So let's understand that. They said the value of the, the original value or the value of the bike decreases each year by 10%. So the value, so 10% of 180, okay? 10%, which is 0 0.1 of 1,800. is equal to 180. But this is the amount by which the bike will go down. So this is not the value after one year. So someone was saying 180. 180 is not the value after one year. The value rather will go down by 180. Therefore, you have to subtract 180 from the value to get the value after one year. You get it. So the one who was saying one, uh, 180, 180 will not be the value after one year. Rather, you have to subtract the 180 from the original value. And when you do that, you get 1,620. So sometimes they will not give you the Y2 and the Y1 straight away, especially in exams. They will not give you the Y2 and the Y1 and the X2. They will not give you they will not give it to you straight away. They will give you a particular sentence. Then you have to understand the sentence to be able to get your Y2 and your Y1. Okay, so take note of that. So having our Y2 and our Y1, we can now start. So we'll find our M. Our M is what? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Okay, so we know our Y2 already, which is 1620 minus Y1 of 1800. Then our X21 minus what? Zero. So that gives us M of what? Yes, what will, what will be the M? M will be what? Minus one is over one. So M will be negative 180. Any number divided by one is the same. So you don't need to write uh, bring over one. So our M is negative what? 180. So we have our M. So we can now find our C. We are saying that C is equal to Y minus MX. So our uh, Y, let's choose Y1, 1,800 minus M is negative 180 into bracket X1 is zero. So what do we get here? We get C is equal to what? 1,800. I hope it's correct. C is equal to 1,800, right? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. So our... Yes. 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 So our V of T, V of T becomes negative 180 T plus 1,800. So negative 180 plus 1,800. So that's the equation expressing V in terms of what? Of T. Okay, that is it. So I hope you understand. Yes, Yes, any question? That is functions. Hello. So that is functions. Yasmin. 
Uh, so, please, you see, in the first question, when you are doing the function, you went straight ahead to do P of X. But in this one, you started with the Y is equal to M. Is it because the question said that we are finding like the equation of V of the other one? I brought the other one, I brought P of T because I wanted to introduce that one to you, the price function to you, the demand function, and how it is presented in exams. That's why I brought that particular one so does that mean in exams anytime they give you a question you start with the y is equal to mx then in your final answer you express it in terms of the latest given you can decide to ignore the y is equal to mx plus you can decide to bring it to it's not really relevant the most important is fine put down your y1 x1 y2 x2 then start with your m and then uh, find your c and then put the function there Thank you. You are welcome. Any other question? Any other question? Eric. Yes, yeah, sir. Please, can you um, solve another seven questions so that we can really understand this? Yeah, we'll solve more questions. I want us to finish before we go on to the tutorial sets. Okay, sure. Thank you. We'll solve more questions from the tutorial sets. So let's look at Johnson. Yes, sir. So, sir, please, the second question. Uh, the first way uh, T is less or equal to zero or less or equal to 10. What are they mean? Please come again with your question. Yes, please. Uh, in the second question, uh, where um, T is less or equal to um, so they are telling greater that, or equal to yes. They are trying to tell us that the time cannot be less than zero and it cannot be greater than 10 years. Oh, okay. All right. So that's Thank cool. you, sir. Yeah, that's all. Okay, so now let's move on. Let's look at equations. So we are done with functions. We are now on the second part, equations. So an equation is the expression that two statements are equal. So it is a so it is a statement that two expressions are equal. Okay, it is the statement that two expressions are equal. So that is an equation. So the, the two expressions are separated by an equal to sign. Okay, the two expressions are separated by an equal to sign. And like functions, an equation must have at least one variable. So I can have y plus 3 is equal to 9. This is an equation. Okay, y plus 3 is equal to 9. And I can also have 2x plus 3y is equal to 25. So these are all what equations. Okay, these are examples of equation. So I said that it is the statement that two expressions are equal. So this is one expression. Okay, this is one expression and this is another expression. So we are saying that y plus three is equal to nine. This is an equation. The two expressions are separated by an equal to sign. Okay. The two equal, uh, expressions are separated by an equal to sign. Then it must have at least one variable. So for example, in the first equation that you have, y plus three is equal to nine, you have one variable, y. 
In a second example, 2x plus 3y is equal to 25. You have two variables, x and y. Mara. Yeah. So 2x plus 3y is equal to 25. So these are examples of equations. Okay. These are examples of equations. So an equation should not be undefined. Okay, one, some properties of equation that it should not be undefined means that we should be able to solve it. Okay, and then we should be able to solve an equation to find the variables. So for example, the equation that I have put on the board. Uh, the equation that I have put on the board, we should be able to solve to find the variable. So for example, we should be able to solve to find this y. When the equation has one variable, you can just solve it straight away. When it has two variables, it means that there must be two equations to solve them. If it has three variables, there must be three equations to solve them. That is what it implies. So for example, the first example like this, we can easily solve for y. And y will give us what? six but the second example we should have two equations before we can solve for them because the it has two variables x and y so there must be two equations and that is where we can apply that simultaneous equations if you have three equations or three variables then we must have three equations to be able to solve for for them okay to be able to solve for them now when you have a quadratic equation, when you have a quadratic equation, okay, a quadratic equation is uh, comes from the, uh, uh, the those uh, polynomial functions. So an example of a quadratic equation is when you have, uh, let's say, two x squared plus 6x plus 6x plus 5 is equal to 0. So this is an example of a quadratic equation. OK? Please mute yourselves. So there's an example of a quadratic equation. 2x squared plus 6x plus 5 is equal to 0. To solve for this, you can use the, what we call the almighty formula. It's called quadratic formula, but we, we know it to be almighty formula from senior high school. Okay, so if you want to solve for this x, we are saying that the x is equal to minus b plus plus or minus root of b squared minus minus 4ac minus 4ac all over 2a. Our, our range it, okay, 2a. So minus B plus or minus minus B plus or minus root of eh, root of B squared minus four AC. All of them over two A. Okay, this is the quadratic formula. We know it to be almighty formula from senior high school. We'll be using this under calculus a lot. Okay, so you take note of that. You take note of that. So let's move on to the applications of equations. 
okay? Application of equations. Application of equations. Application of equations. So yet we are going to solve one or two examples. So my reader, please kindly read for me. Yes, who was reading for me? Or oh, the person has left. Okay, can I get another reader? Okay, Kriya Yamwa, please read for me. A company produces a product at a variable cost per unit of $12 and a fixed cost of $120,000. If each unit can be sold for $20, what is the number of units that must, what is the number of units that must be sold for the company to attain a profit of $100,000? Okay, so uh, a company produces a product at a variable cost of 12, so variable cost per unit 12. Uh, it can be sold, so price is 20. Then the fixed cost is equal to 120,000. They are asking us the units that must be sold to get a profit of a profit of 100,000. Okay, they are asking us the units that must be sold to get a profit of 100,000. So this one, I did have to apply equations to do that. Okay, so first of all, we are looking for our focus is on profit. So how do you find profit? Yes, what's the formula for finding profit? Selling price minus cost use price. The, use the economics one, the one you learned. Revenue minus expense. So total revenue. So profit. profit is equal to TR TR minus what? TC. You get it? Profit is equal to TR minus TC. So this is an example of an equation. Now, how do you find TR? Price times quantity. TR is price times what? Quantity. Okay, TR is price times quantity. So what is our price? $20. So our price is 20. 20. 20 times Q. We don't know the quantity because our focus is we have to find the quantity that must be sold to make a profit of 100,000. Are you getting the point? So we don't know the quantity. So 20 times Q. And that gives us what? 20 Q. Are you following? Yes, please. Yes. Okay, 20 Q. So our TR is 20 Q. Now let's move on to yes, sir. cost. Total cost, how do you find total cost? Total, total cost, cost. Total fixed cost minus total. Plus total variable cost. So TBC plus, plus TFC. TFC. Now how do you get TBC? TBC is 
variable cost yes. per unit. Okay, CVC, total variable cost is the variable cost per unit times quantity. Okay, the variable cost per unit times quantity. So I'll make VC variable cost per unit. So VC, VC, so TVC is VC times Q. So plus TFC. So that is. Total cost is equal to okay. So, what is our variable cost per unit? So, so our variable cost per unit is uh, twelve. So 12 times Q plus our fixed cost is 120,000. Therefore, our total cost gives us 12 Q, uh, 12 Q plus what? 120,000. So having our, having our, Total revenue and our total cost, we can now find our profit. Because they said profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. We have found total revenue, we have found total cost. Okay, so moving forward. 120,000. So moving forward, they said the profit must be what? 100,000. Okay, so profit. So let me quote it here again. Profit is equal to TR minus TC. So our profit is 100,000. It's equal to total revenue is 20 Q. Okay, 20 Q minus now, anytime you are doing you are doing something like this and you are bringing the cost, put the cost in bracket. Put the cost in bracket. It's very important. If you don't put the cost in bracket, your sign will change. So minus twelve Q plus one twenty thousand. Then you open the bracket. So hundred thousand is equal to twenty Q minus twelve Q minus 120,000. But if you don't bring the bracket, you'll be tempted to maintain this plus, this positive sign here, and your answer will be wrong. So we group like terms. Grouping like terms, we have 100,000, 100,000 minus 120,000. A plus, sorry, because the 120,000 will cross to become plus. It's equal to 20 Q minus 12 Q. Then we'll have one, two, 120,000. It's equal to eight Q. We divide both sides by eight. And then Q is equal to what? 27,500. 27,500 units. So it means that they must sell 27,500 units to make a profit of 100,000 dinosaurs. Please, do you understand it? Do you understand? If you yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. If you don't, don't mute yourself and do on some background work. Oh, come on, sir. No more mute. Do <laughs> you understand? Should I go yes, back? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so please pay attention. 
Who's so they said that the company produces a product at a variable cost of 12 per unit. So a variable cost per unit is $12. First cost is $120,000. Okay. And price is $20. What is the number of units that must be sold? So you are being asked to find X or Q quantity that must be sold to make a profit of 100,000. Okay, so our focus is on profit. So how do you find profit? We are saying that profit is total revenue minus total cost. Okay, profit is total revenue minus total cost. So how do you find total revenue? Total revenue is price times quantity. So our price has been given us $20. We don't know the quantity. So represent the quantity to be Q. Therefore, our revenue will be price of 20 times quantity Q. So 20 Q. So that is our revenue. Do you understand up to that point? Yes. Yes. yes then we then. want to find the cost. Now the cost, how do you find total cost? Total variable cost plus total face cost. Okay, total variable cost plus total face cost. Now, how do you find total variable cost? The variable cost depends on quantity. So you multiply the variable cost per unit times the quantity produced, which we don't know. That is Q. So I say that total variable cost is variable cost per unit times quantity. That's what you see here. Then you add the total face cost to it. So our total variable cost is 12 times quantity becomes 12 Q plus 120,000, which is the fixed cost. So our total cost becomes 12Q plus 120,000. Do you understand up to that point? Okay. Yes. Then moving forward, we'll now find our profits. They said, how, many, how many, uh, many units must be sold to make a profit of? So our focus is not to find the profit itself, but to find the units. So our profit has been given as 100,000. You put it there. It's equal to the revenue is 20Q. Minus total cost. And I'm saying that anytime you are bringing the cost, put it in brackets. So you can see I have put mine in brackets. So 12Q plus 120,000. The rest is your mathematics. So you have to group like terms. Or well, first of all, open the bracket. Opening the bracket, negative times positive becomes negative. Negative times positive also becomes negative. That's why we have 100,000 is equal to 20Q minus 12Q minus 120,000Q. Uh, 120,000, sorry. Then you group your like terms and solve for Q. So grouping like terms, the 120,000 negative will cross to the 100,000 side because I'm positive. And that gives us 220,000. 20Q minus 12Q gives us 8Q. So you are finding Q, divide both sides by it, and you get 27,500. So 27,500 units must be sold to make a profit of 100,000. Is it understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any question on that? No, please. Okay, so let's solve another example. Okay, so stop talking, stop talking. Mata. What's Mata, you raise your hand. Oh, it was a mistake. Okay. Someone should read for me. You want to invest. 60,000 Ghana cities. Parts of this will be invested in asset one with a return of. And um, please, I want to know, I want to know how you'll be able to differentiate equations and functions. How you'll be able to differentiate equations and functions. So I write, let me write this here. 
Uh, your first score to let's say negative ten x plus three. Y is equal to Yeah, my network, oh, my network, I am sorry. <laughs> uh, BHJCR, please allow me. BHJCR, please allow me, allow me. They said I cannot share my screen. Sir, please, I have not allowed you. Thank you very much. Okay, so someone asked a question. I was trying to demonstrate when my network messed up. And yes, my name is Ghana and I want to. can't get a written and represent. So someone asked the difference between a function and an equation. And I was trying to write something. So I have P of X is equal to negative 10 X plus, let's say six. Then I also have two Y or two X plus three Y is equal to uh, 24. Can tell me the difference between these two expressions. Uh huh. Yes, who can tell me the difference? Yes, Lydia. Please, with the first one, the variable was only one, but with the second one, there were two variables, which is x and y. Uh. Do you know that this P of X is the same as Y? Ah, uh, yes, I just realized that. Mm -hmm. So, who else will try? Okay, yes. let me try again. Okay, try again. In the first one, why, why was, um, why was the subject? Mm. But with the second one, why was included in the equation? <laughs> yes, who else? Another person. You have done well. Hello, sir. Uh, I, yeah, I've done well. Hello, sir. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah
one it's person at a time. Right, right. Please, one person at a time. Who is at the sports and doing the class at the sports? Are you at the sports or Roda? Okay, who was on the floor? Yeah, sir. Say hello, sir. Yes. Yes, yes. You are on the floor. Yeah, so I was saying so the, the function is just is find the relationship, like the relationship between Y and X. But, okay. Yeah, but the equation is just trying to get the values kind of something. Exactly. So Kofi Y is close. So I remember I told you that a function follows mapping and it is a rule. Okay, that maps input out uh, variables to output variables. So in a in a function, there should be an input variable and there should be an output variable. But in equations, we don't have that. So in a function, one variable depends on another. But in an equation, we don't have one variable depending on another. or some variable depending on another variable. So you can see that here, the Y is dependent on X. So you can see that they are at separate sides, but functions for equations, they can be at the same side because they don't depend on each other. So the one who asked, who asked the question? Who asked the question? The one who asked, are you okay? Okay, so a function, kinds of like he said talks about relationship so how this one is related to this by equations do not talk about that okay so that's let's move on so please read for me yes read you for want me. to in you want to invest 60,000 Ghana cities. Part of this will be invested in asset one with return of 5% and the remainder in asset two with a return of 7%. What is the least you can invest in asset two and still get at least 4,000 Ghana cities in total return? Thank you very much. So you have an amount of 60,000 Ghana city to invest. So total amount to invest is 60,000. You are considering investing it in asset one. Return is 5%. Okay. Oh, and the remainder in asset two. Asset two. That one, the return is 7%. They are asking of the least we can invest in asset two and get a total return. So our total return, our total return is 4,000, 4,000 Ghana cities. So to be able to solve something like this, you realize that there are two, yes, good evening. There are two variables we are looking for, asset one and asset two. Okay, asset one and asset two. So first of all, you don't know how much you should invest in asset two or asset one. You also don't know how much you should invest in asset two. But the question is, how much should we invest in asset two? To get a return of this, how how much do we invest in asset two? We don't know. Neither do we know how much we should invest in asset one. So the first thing to do is that you represent that those ones with variables. So let's say x and y be the amount to invest in asset one and two respectively. Okay, because we don't know how much we should invest in asset one. We don't know how much we should invest in asset two. So you represent those 
the amount you are going to invest in asset one and asset two with variables. So let X and Y be the amount to invest in asset one and two respectively. Are you okay? So we can form one equation. So we know that if we are to invest X and Y in asset one and two, then the amount we invest in asset Y, uh, asset one, and the amount we invest in asset two should be equal to 6,000. You agree? Because we have 60,000 to invest. So part will be invested in asset one and the remainder in asset two. So I'm saying that the amount we put in asset one plus the amount we put in asset two should give us 60,000. Do you agree? So I will say X plus X plus Y is equal to 60,000. Do you agree? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, so you agree. So that is one equation. Now I told you that anytime you have two variables, to be able to solve for them, you must get two equations. Remember, I told you that if you have one variable, you can solve it straight without any. If you have two variables, you have to get two equations. If you have three variables, you must get three equations to solve them. Here we have two variables, asset one and asset two represented with X and Y. So we must get two equations. So one of the equation is with regards to the total amount to invest. We can form another equation with a return. So they are saying that the total return should be 4,000. So the total return, not the return for asset one or the return for asset two, but the total, it means that the return for asset one plus the return for asset two should be equal to 4,000. So how do you get the return for asset one? They said that asset one has a return of 5%. So any amount you invest in asset one to get the return for asset one, multiply that amount by 5%. Okay, any amount you invest in asset one, to get the return for asset one, multiply that amount by 5%. Here, we have stated that the amount to invest in asset one is, five, is X. Therefore, the return for asset one is X times 5%. And that is 0.05X. Do you agree? Yes, sir. I don't know if some of you are yes. in the class or so. If you unmute yourself, we can hear Bubuche Bubu. Okay, let's move on. So the return on asset one is 5% times the amount invested in asset one. Likewise, the return on asset two will be the percentage multiplied by the amount invested in asset two. And that is seven percent. So zero point zero seven. Why? But we are saying that the total return is the return in asset one plus the return in asset two. That gives us what four thousand. Do you understand? First of all, do you agree? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Yes, sir. So do you understand it? Sir, please go over the total return one. Okay, yeah. so I'm going over the total return. They are saying that they, must, they, they want to get a total return of at least. The at least means something, but yeah, let's, let's hold on to the at least and move on to equal to. Now, they want to get a total return of 4,000. The total return here it's the return for both assets, not the return for asset one or the return for asset two only. It is the return for both assets. So the return for asset one plus the return for asset two should be equal to 4,000. And how do we get the return for asset one? They are saying that asset one has a return of 5%. So to get the return for asset one, multiply 5% by the amount you invested in asset one. And we don't know the amount we invested in asset one. We have represented that amount with X. 
So we know X is the amount to invest in asset one. Therefore, to get the return for asset one, multiply 5% by X. And that is what you see here, 0.05X. Okay, 5% is equivalent to 0 0.05. Now, the return in asset two is 7%. So 0.07Y, that is the amount invested in asset two is Y. Which we are hand. So 0.071. So if you add the return on asset one, which is 0 0.05, to the return on asset two, which is 0 0.07, we should get 4,000. And that's the second equation. Do you understand it now? Yes, please. So you are going to call this simultaneously, applying the simultaneous equation. Okay, so to do this simultaneously, let's use the substitution method. So we can number our, this one should be equation, equation one. Okay, and this one should be equation two. So let's make it, uh, X the subject of, what are we finding? We are finding the amount to invest in asset two, which is Y. Okay, which is uh, Y. So let's make X uh, the subject of, or Y the subject of equation one. Let's make Y the subject of equation one. So we are using substitution method. So make Y, the subject of equation one. So making y the subject of equation one, we have y is equal to 60,000 minus x. Okay, y is equal to 60,000 minus x. Now we, we substitute, so that can give us, that we can make that equation three. So we substitute equation three into equation two. Okay, so substitute, I'll sort my substitute. Substitute equation three into, equation two. Into equation two. So that one, doing that, we'll get zero point zero five X. So it means that wherever you see to substitute means that wherever you see y in equation two, put 60,000 minus x there. That's what it simply means. So 0 0.05x plus 0 0.07 into bracket. The y, the y and we'll put 60,000 minus x there. It's equal to 4,000. Then you solve for x. Okay, you solve for x. So solve for x, we'll get 0.05x plus, then let's open the bracket. 0 0.07 times 60,000, what do you get? 4,200. So 4,200. Minus 0.07x will give us 0.07x, okay? It's equal to 4,000. Then you group like terms. So grouping like terms, we'll get 0.05x minus 0.07x is equal to 4,000 
minus 4,200. So we get negative 0.02x is equal to negative 200. So you divide both sides by negative 0 0.02. What do you get? X give us what? 10,000. 10,000. 10,000. X gives us 10,000. I hope you understand up to this point. Yes, please. Good. So X is 10,000, but X is what? The amount you invest in asset one. They are asking for the amount you can invest in asset two. So if you have to stay time to invest in, you have to stay time to invest and you have invested 10,000 in asset one, what is the remainder? 50,000. So 50,000 so 50, should be invested in as well, asset two. Okay. So X plus, plus Y is equal to 60, now x is 10,000. So 10,000 plus y is equal to 60,000. Therefore, y is equal to 60,000 minus 10,000. And that gives us y is equal to what? 50,000. So therefore, they must invest 50,000 into assets too to get a total return of 40,000. You understand? Yes. That's it. So these are two examples on applications of equation. The last thing we'll consider, I will not solve tutorial assets today. Our next meeting, which is tomorrow, okay? Monday, we're supposed to meet, but uh, it couldn't come on. Let me, and it couldn't come on. So we are trying to fix it tomorrow. Tomorrow, we'll be looking at tutorial sets on this particular, this one, before we start with calculus, differentiation and integration. Okay, so the last thing we are going to consider is BEP, break even point. That one is simple. We'll do it fast, then we'll, we'll move away. So let's. Mat, uh, yes, Marta. After Marta. getting the answers, if you want to, uh, if you want to verify to get your total return, how will you do it? Oh, you can actually use calculator to verify, but you can verify if you put everything there, put the 50,000 and the 10,000 into equation two and see if you can get 4,000. You can also verify using the calculator. Okay. Yes, any other question? Yes, uh, Marta, please yourself. Look. Not a cheap, or mute and talk. Looking at all the questions we've solved, they come with different concepts. And before you solve them, you need prior knowledge. You need I prior knowledge in what? How... Prior knowledge in what? In like, exam example, the um, uh, cost questions, you need to know um, the total cost, fixed cost, and those things. And then uh, investment to another stuff. And also, so you I don't know that... how, like, you see that that is you see investing whatever we learn is a build up some of the things okay for example teaching of a simultaneous equation no one will teach you because they are, you have done simultaneous equation right from ghs no one will teach you here they are presumed that you know uh how to find profit and all those things you did it in the microeconomics maybe doing it here will bring it to mind but no one is now come to teach you. So it's a build up. What we need to tell you or teach you is that new thing that you have to be taught. But something like change of subject and all those things, no one will teach you at this level. 
you should have known mathematics. You have done mathematics right from GHS. I get your point. So not that you need, you must have prior knowledge. You must have prior knowledge in something to be able to apply it as you move forward. That is why. And also, how are you able to just look at a question and see how to solve it, how to go about everything? It looks like magic. I don't understand. No, it's, it's not magic. It, is, it comes as a result of practice. So as we have done this, we will also solve tutorial set questions tomorrow. And I believe by the time we will be done with that, you, you will not see it as magic. You, you will also see a question and you know that this is how I should do it. Okay, thank you. You are welcome. So let's do BEP. Lower your hand. Okay, Yemwa, Ekuya. And please, what time are we meeting tomorrow? Well, it will be communicated by BHTCR. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's do BEP. BEP is simple. We'll finish right now. Then we'll, we'll end the class for today. So the, I'm sure uh, BHDC will make the videos available. You can go over them, over and over, to get a better understanding. So break even points. So break even is the point at which you make no profit nor a loss. Okay? Break even point is the point that you don't make a profit, you don't make a loss. And it is a very important concept in business. Because anyone running a business must know the, the, the level of activity that I am not making a profit, I am not making a loss. Because if you know that level, going below that level, of activity will result in a loss. And going beyond that level of activity will result in a profit. So you also you always know how much I should produce so that I can get a profit. So BEP is very, very well important. So we are saying that at break even point, please mute yourselves. At break even, you don't have a profit, you don't have a loss. So if I put the profit equation here, I told that profit is equal to profit is equal to TR when we're doing equations, TR minus what? TC. Okay. So we are saying that at break even, there is no what? Profit. Hmm? There is no what? Profit. So profit is zero at break even. TR minus TC is equal to zero. So if TR minus TC is equal to zero, then it tells us that TR is equal to TC, isn't it? Yes, please. Yes. If TR minus TC is equal to zero, then it means that TR is equal to TC. It means there's no difference. So total revenue is equal to total cost. So how do you find total revenue? So I'm using this to deduce the break-even formula for you. Going forward, you don't need to deduce it again. You just quote the formula. So how do you find TR? I told you TR is equal to what? Price times quantity. I've given that one already. Isn't it? Yes. And then TC. TC, I have told you TC. I further broke it down that TC is equal to variable cost times quantity. Variable cost times quantity. Eh? Variable cost times quantity plus what? Face cost. Do you remember this? Yes. Yeah. So, good. So at break even, Total revenue is equal to total cost. So our TR, which is PQ, okay, is equal to our, uh, let me use VIN for variable cost or variable cost per unit, VIN only. So VQ 
vehicle plus uh, FC, face cost. So we are looking at the break-even point. That is the quantity. We want the quantity that will help us break even. So you are going to make kill the subject of this. So make it kill the subject, you group like terms. So we'll have PQ. The VQ will cross to become minus VQ. Is equal to FC. Then you factor Q out. Q is equal to P minus Q, uh, minus V. I have factored Q out because I have PQ minus VQ. I have factor Q out. Then I get to, uh, P, Q into bracket P minus V is equal to FC. So if I want to now find Q alone, Q alone is equal to FC over P minus V. And that gives us the break-even point formula. Okay, the break-even point formula. The break-even point formula. So this is how to find the break-even quantity or break-even point formula. So we are saying that BEP, BEP is equal to FC, that is first cost over P minus, minus V. Where BEP? BEQ or BEP, they are saying break even quantity. Where FC is first cost, P is price, and V is variable cost per unit. So write them. So where FC is equal to fixed cost. P is equal to price per unit. Then V is equal to variable cost per unit. So to find your break-even point, these are the three things you look out for from the question. Okay, these are the three things you look out for from the question. So you also you can also be asked to calculate what you call MOS margin of safety. MOS margin of safety. Okay, margin of safety. So when we talk of margin of safety, it's margin of safety basically tells or uh, estimate how safe their company is from making a loss. Okay, it's it looks at the margin or it estimates how the company is safe from making a loss. So if you get the margin of safety. It helps you to avoid losses, even if your sales falls, okay? It helps you to avoid losses. So it's very important to know how to calculate margin of what? Safety. So you can be asked to calculate margin of safety in units. To calculate margin of safety in units, the formula is, Budgeted sales minus break even 
budgeted sales units minus break even quantity. Okay, budgeted sales units minus break even quantity. They can also be asked to calculate margin of safety in percentage. That one is equal to MOS unit. MOS unit over budgeted sales. times 100. Okay. So this is how to find the MOS. Okay, so MOS units, you know how to find MOS units. Budgeted sales minus BEQ. The MOS percentage is the MOS units you have found over the budgeted sales times 100. That's all. So we'll solve one example here. Then we would call it a day. So someone should read for us. This is the last question we are solving for the day. That will be done with the class. So someone should please read for us. A company manufactures shoes at a material cost of $0.85 per pair and labor cost of $0.96 per pay. Additional variable cost amounts to $0.32 per pay and fixed cost of $70,500. If each pay sells for $2.63 dollars how many pairs must be sold for the company to break even? What is the margin of safety in percentage if budgeted sales is estimated at 170,000? Thank you very much for the sweet voice. You're welcome. So, the same material cost Per pair is 0 0.85. Labor cost per pair is 0 0.96. Additional variable cost. Additional variable cost per pair is equal to 0 0.32. Now, they said that it sells, so price is equal to 2.36. And the fixed cost is 70,500. Budgeted sales. It's 170,000 units. We are to find, first of all, the break-even point, and then second, margin of safety in percentage. So, break-even BEP is equal to FC.
BEP is equal to FC over P minus P minus V. That's a variable cost. So do we have FC? Yes, we have FC. Do we have P? Yes. Do we have the variable cost? Now the variable cost, the total has not been given. So you have to find the total variable cost per unit. Because, but in the time you see per pair, it means it varies. Per pair, it varies. So material cost, labor cost, additional variable cost, they all vary. So you have to find the total variable cost per unit. So the V is equal to 0 0.85 plus 0 0.96 plus 0 0.32. And please, that gives us how much? 2.13. So V is equal to 2.13. So having that, we can now find our BEP. So BEP is equal to So, uh, so the first cost is 70,500 over price is uh, 2.36 minus variable cost of 2.13. And that gives us how much? Sir, please, I didn't get where the 213 came from. The 213, we are adding the material cost. You see, material, anytime you see per pair, it is a variable cost. So material cost per pair, variable. Labor cost per pair, variable. Additional variable cost per pair, variable. So add all these three. So you can see that for rating fees, you cost 0 0.85 plus 0 0.96 plus 0 0.32. So if you add, what do you get? Salon. 2.13. Okay, Salom, you are your hand is up. Sir, please, the price from the question it was 2.63, but you've made it 2.36. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Error of transposition. I've transposed the figures. Please make it six three. Make it six three. Okay. Yes, I've trans. Thank you very much for drawing my attention. So what do you get for BEP? Mm hmm When you calculate, what do you get? 141,000. So 141,000 units. So that is yes. the break-even quantity. So that is BEP. OK, BEP. Now they said we should calculate the margin of safety in percentage, MOS percentage. So MOS percentage, MOS percentage is equal to MOS unit, which is equal to budgeted units. But that time you need the same as the budget sales, okay? Times hundred. So the, the MOS percentage, you know, the MOS units, you know, that's what you see on top, budgeted units minus big over budgeted units times 100. So we get, we get budgeted unit is a, 
100,000. Minus B, 141. Thousand, which is budgeted, times 100%. Times hundred. So what do we get? Seventeen point zero five eight eight. So uh, MOS percentage. It's equal to 17 point what? 0588. So 06. Okay. Percent. Okay. Percent. Okay. Percent. So that is it. Mm. That is it. Sometimes they can also tell you to find the quantity that will give you a particular profit. Eh? The quantity that will give you a particular profit. So to do that is simple. If you want to find the quantity that will give you a particular profit, the formula is so let me put quantity for a profit. The formula is, it's, it is similar to the BEP, but you add the profit to the FC. So the formula is fixed cost plus the profit. Over the P minus the V. Okay, over the P minus the V. So quantity for a particular profit. 